This may look like a regular Cessna behind me, but it's anything but. This plane has the ability to fly completely autonomously. Now, I'm about to take a ride, and unless something really unexpected happens, the safety pilot on board isn't gonna touch the controls once. Autonomy is everywhere these days. It can drive you to work, deliver your lunch, and secure your home. But are you ready to let it fly our plane? Welcome to X-Wing, a Bay Area startup that wants to put cargo flights in the sky with no pilots. This is an experimental Cessna 208 Grand Caravan, modified with X-Wing's Superpilot Autonomous Flight System. Superpilot is a suite of software and hardware that can perceive the world around the plane, make decisions, control the plane, and communicate with human monitors on the ground. So right now he's doing automated pre-flight checks with the system, so the trim's being checked, the flaps are being checked. I'm about to see how it all works by letting Superpilot take me on a fully autonomous flight. We begin taxiing to the runway in manual with the human pilot at the controls. But with the push of a button, X-Wing auto flight system engaged. Superpilot takes over. So we're in X-Wing's fully autonomous plane. Ryan, the pilot, is sitting right next to me, but he's not gonna do anything. This plane is about to fly itself. Continue we're about to take off. Taxi. Auto takeoff initiated. Airspeed alive. It felt so natural, like if I didn't know what was going on, I would think a human was flying this plane. Test the 132 is making kill downwind, be no factor. Okay, so we're actually flying uh, an automated mission right now using uh, FAA waypoints. Um, so we're going to fly uh, to intercept this waypoint, and we're climbing on up to, uh, to 3,000 feet. As it's climbing, it's using its, uh, its maximum uh, torque available, which is essentially power to, uh, to enable it to climb as quickly as possible. Autopilot is not a new concept. It's been around almost as long as planes. Some experts estimate as much as 90% of commercial flights are automated. But takeoff is always manual, since it would require a split-second decision to abort. Most landings are also done manually. And even at cruising altitude, it's the pilot's responsibility to monitor conditions and take over any changes to the flight plan. In all systems, the system is designed from the ground up to be able to uh, detect, identify any fault, and keep uh, flying throughout the mission. Maxime Gariel is X-Wing's chief technology officer. It's his job to figure out what behaviors the plane needs to fly safely from taxi to landing. So the system can be broken down into three pieces. The first piece is the auto flight system that allows the aircraft to fly as well as to taxi. So it's really like controlling all the control surfaces, controlling the brakes, actuating all the switches. Then the second portion is the perception system that allows the aircraft to see what's around, to understand its surroundings, and to make decisions. And finally, the third portion is the communication system. So being able to communicate with the atrophy control, with the ground control system that we have, as well as with other pilots. The plane is full of sensors, LIDAR, camera, radar, all of these designed to help it detect other objects during taxiing, takeoff, landing, and navigation. Oh, there's the traffic right there. Finally see it visually. If Superpilot does detect another aircraft in the flight path, the plane can automatically adjust its plan to avoid a potential collision. It's worth noting we weren't relying on the object avoidance technology during our demonstration. That was done manually. On the ground, a human operator monitors the plane and the flight plan. But if everything goes according to plan, our ground control station operators don't honestly have to do that much. We're mostly a radio operator at this point. We are supervising our autonomous system and making sure that everything is healthy and all good to go and it's making smart uh, choices about where it's going. I'm not doing anything to interface with the airplane. I'm only talking to other airplanes or air traffic control. Back at 3,000 feet, Ryan shows me how Superpilot's precision gives it a major advantage over human pilots. So this is one of the displays uh, that's integrated with the system. So it kind of uh, tells you the system is engaged in auto mode. And then it tells you like the current indicated airspeed and altitude. You can see they're perfectly stabilized. If I was flying the airplane, it would be embarrassing. I'd probably be all over the place. But perfectly stabilizing crews right now. To be clear, that is not a slight on his skills as a pilot. 
Yeah, so Super Pilot has much better awareness of small changes that are required, so it's very hard to be as precise. And that translates into better efficiency as well. Correct. And also, like, just human fatigue. Like, you can only focus so hard on something for so long. X-Wing isn't planning on sending passengers on pilotless flights anytime soon. Its target is the cargo industry. X-Wing CEO Mark Pietti founded the company in 2016. He had started flying planes just a year before and saw what he calls the unfulfilled potential of aviation. Aircraft are amazing vehicles, but the problem is they're hard to fly. When you drive a car, you kind of have a sense for the amount of grip uh, the tire has on the road. You can see obstacles relatively easily because they uh, and then react to them fairly quickly. When you're flying an aircraft, you don't get any of these uh, reference points. Uh, you don't know how much wind there is out there. You can't feel how fast the vehicle is flying. And when you're looking to avoid other obstacles, you have to spot them miles away. Mark says a fleet of self-flying cargo planes can reduce costs and improve accessibility for small communities around the world. But it could also be a stepping stone to help pave the way for autonomous passenger flights. Let's face it, people are still getting used to the idea of letting their cars do the driving. Convincing them to take the pilot out of the cockpit at 30,000 feet will likely be even harder. Would you feel comfortable if I wasn't here, or? Oh, uh, that's a great question. I think you could look at it uh, the same way people looked at elevators in the turn of last century. I mean, what would it take for me to get into an elevator without an operator, a human operator on board? Well, I don't know, shoot. Uh, you're looking back now, you'd be like, well, that's silly. Why would you need a human to go help you press buttons on an elevator? But back then, this was very controversial. Our grandkids will get on vehicles and, and will ask themselves, well, why did you ever need pilots on board these vehicles? But what would that mean for the future pilots of the world? We've gotten used to seeing robots take over manual labor and manufacturing jobs. But we like to think careers that require years of specialized training are generally protected from becoming automated. Still, Ryan says he welcomes X-Wing's autonomous planes. Once the technology has passed the regulatory process, the company plans to start with regional cargo flights that most pilots don't want. The normal mission for this airplane is like fly from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. The airplane sits there from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then fly for one hour at the end of the day. We actually think this technology is a job creator as opposed to something that will take away jobs. There might be some changes in the types of jobs that people have, right? Uh, there's going to be a lot of jobs for remote operators and uh, network, operation, network operation centers to supervise these fleets uh, of, of uncrewed vehicles. X-Wing already operates a fleet of 35 aircraft that fly piloted cargo flights around the U.S. The company is hoping to have its super pilot technology certified and in commercial operation in mid-2025. Auto land sequence initiated. So it's starting the uh, the landing sequence, so the flaps already went to 10. Slowly increasing the pitch attitude. The smooth. Another beautiful landing. So now that I've experienced my first self-flying flight, I have to say that it really didn't feel that much different than any other flight that I've been on. I mean, yes, I did have a safety pilot sitting next to me who was ready to jump in and take the controls if anything did go wrong, but the autopilot was engaged really most of the time and it felt really smooth, really natural. I really couldn't tell the difference between the autopilot and the manual pilot. So it's not a matter of if, but when. This technology is coming. So I wanna know what you think. Would you take a flight in a self-flying plane? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to CNET for more like it.